In April of 1979, people from the Soviet city of Sverdlovsk began falling strangely ill with inexplicable symptoms. Soviet intelligence is believed to have covered up the true number of casualties. When the Kremlin sent scientists and military officials to investigate the zone, they concluded it was contaminated meat from the local cattle. But it was not. The USSR hid the truth from its population and the world. Eventually, word got out. What truly happened, whistleblowers said, was an accident at a clandestine biological weapons laboratory that liberated deadly anthrax spores that contaminated Sverdlovsk's air. It was an emission that cost the Soviet military the secrecy of its top-secret biological warfare projects. And at the height of the Cold War, during the aggressive Reagan administration, the USSR could not afford the luxury of having its secret military programs exposed. Thus, the accident was buried deep in propaganda. After the accident occurred, Soviet officials took over the zone and closed the city. The military has been patrolling the area until this very day. Many suspect that Russia still continues to test deadly pathogens and other hazardous materials at the site. Biological Warfare Biological weapons have been used by mankind for centuries. During ancient sieges, the enemy that encircled a city or fortress would turn to the carcasses of horses, cattle, or even fallen soldiers to cause terrible epidemics in the city garrison. The rotting waste would make its way over the inner walls through catapults, contaminating the food and water. Sometimes rivers were destroyed as well, with garbage and man-made poisons. During the Great War, the use of biological and chemical weapons reached new heights in battle. Deadly gases were used on a grand scale for the first time, maiming thousands of soldiers on the Western Front. Soldiers from all nations returned to their homes with deformities that had no cure. The impact of this new type of warfare terrorized society so much that by the time World War II began, no nation dared to use these gases again. Nonetheless, armies across the world continued to do research on biological weapons, discovering new ways of eradicating an opponent without the use of nuclear or explosive firepower. The Cold War was no exception. Both the US and the Soviet Union did extensive scientific investigations related to biological weapons. There were official treaties that forbid the use of these weapons, such as the Convention on the Prohibition of the Development, Production, and Stockpiling of Bacteriological, Biological, and Toxin Weapons and on their Destruction, signed in April 1972. Still, both sides conducted experiments in secret facilities to gain the upper edge if a conflict came to be. The same happened with the production of nuclear warheads. The US and USSR wanted to win the arms race at all costs. Weaponized Anthrax after World War II concluded, the USSR quickly got to work with intelligence seized from the German and Japanese armies. The US did the same. Under Stalin's regime, hundreds of secret facilities were created to experiment with new technologies that would make the USSR the most potent military after the US. One of those centers was Sverdlovsk, where the Soviets manufactured tanks, ICBMs, and other Cold War-era weaponry. The biological weapons facility of Sverdlovsk was built using information collected from the Japanese germ warfare program in Manchuria after they surrendered in 1945. The site grabbed international attention when a nuclear facility exploded in 1957. Since then, the US and its spies monitored the area on further Soviet developments. In military compound number 19 of Sverdlovsk, the Soviets heavily guarded a deadly compound called Anthrax 836. The disease had previously leaked out of a facility in Kirov in 1953. The USSR had plans of using it against the US in case a war began. The anthrax strain was going to be used on the SS-18 ICBM that would go after vital American targets. Anthrax is an infectious disease caused by the bacterium Bacillus anthracis. It can manifest in skin, lung, and intestinal problems. It can take up to and over two months to experience the symptoms. It is incredibly contagious, as it spreads upon contact with the infectious spores through breathing, eating, or contact with the skin. The bacteria was first tested by Unit 731 of the Japanese Kwantung Army in Manchuria during the 1930s. The Allies designated it Agent N during the war. Weaponized anthrax became part of the British arsenal during World War II. The Royal Air Force planned to use it against Germany in 1944, but they opted to continue conventionally bombarding the country with explosive ordnance. In 1969, President Nixon ordered the dismantling of U.S. bio-warfare programs, leading to the destruction of all existing stockpiles of biological weapons. The Soviet Union supposedly did the same with the more than 100 tons of anthrax spores it had stored, but a terrible accident in 1979 proved otherwise, causing global outrage. 
On Friday, March 30th, 1979, a technician from the Soviet Sverdlovsk facility removed a clogged filter while spore drying machines were turned off. The anthrax produced had to be dried to create a powder used as an aerosol for military purposes. He left a written notice, but the supervisor did not write it down in the logbook. When the next shift came, nothing unusual in the log was found, and the subsequent shift supervisor turned the machines on. Hours later, a technician found out that the filter was missing and reinstalled it. But it was too late, as the anthrax contained in the facility made it out into the exterior. The deadly infection slowly made its way through the air, infecting people and animals in the surroundings. The incident was reported to high-ranking military officials, but local police and guards were not informed of the accident. Most of the people that worked near the zone fell immediately ill during the next days. One week later, they were no more. The official toll was 105 casualties, almost all of them male. The KGB destroyed all hospital records that occurred between the outbreak and the following month. The cover-up and destruction of any info related to the outbreak was so effective that it was not until months later that word got out of Russia about the incident. Initial public reports emerged in October 1979 from a Russian-language newspaper in West Germany. In it, an article talked about a germ accident that led to more than a thousand deaths in Russia. During the early 1980s, rumors of an explosion in April 1979 at a secret military facility near Sverdlovsk reached Britain and the U.S. It was said that a large number of anthrax spores had killed thousands in the surrounding areas. Reports specified that the area was placed under Soviet military control and that extensive decontamination efforts were implemented to clear the zone. The accident gained global attention, and the U.S. military intelligence began conducting signals intercepts and plane captures with recon aircraft to find the truth about the incident. It photographed roadblocks, decontamination tracks, soldiers with gas masks and special suits, confirming that something catastrophic had likely happened in Compound 19 at Sverdlovsk. The official Russian response was that the outbreak was provoked by contaminated meat. To further cover up the accident, Soviet newspapers and journalists wrote articles related to livestock infected by inadequate diets and other nonsense explanations. American and Soviet relations worsened, and the Cold War tensions rose again in the wake of Afghanistan's Russian invasion in 1980. Reagan accused the USSR that Soviet allies used a mycotoxin known as Yellow Rain against Allied troops in Asia. The Aftermath in 1986, during the last years of the Cold War, Professor Matthew Maselson of Harvard was granted permission by the Kremlin for a trip to Moscow to interview Soviet health officials about the outbreak of 1979. Professor Maselson eventually released a paper in which Soviet officials admitted that the outbreak was caused by a contaminated meat processing plant. He concluded that the Russian explanation was, quote, completely plausible and consistent with what is known from medical literature and recorded human experiences with anthrax. In 1988, Soviet officials traveled to the U.S. to give a three-hour-long talk at the National Academy of Sciences, presenting the accident and even gut tissue from the anthrax victims' autopsies. Not everyone was convinced by the Soviet explanation. Philip Russell, a retired Army infectious disease researcher, said to source outlets, quote, I knew they were lying, and I knew they were lying because I had been briefed in Defense Intelligence Agency evidence. Nevertheless, President Boris Yeltsin, who was Sverdlovsk's Communist Party chief back in 1979, later admitted the true nature of the anthrax outbreak. Wall Street Journal reporter Peter Gumbel traveled to Sverdlovsk to interview people affected by the outbreak. This led to Professor Maselson gaining access to the region once again in 1992 to conduct further research. Around this time, Soviet authorities finally revealed the real cause of the accident when the world was about to discover the truth hidden by propaganda. A Soviet official revealed that had the winds been blowing in Moscow's direction at the time of the accident, it could have resulted in the pathogen spreading to thousands of people. In 1992, Ken Albeck, a Soviet scientist who worked in the bioweapons program and defected to the U.S., told scientists that the anthrax got out because an air filter was not correctly placed. He would later write Biohazard, the chilling true story of the largest covert biological weapons program in the world, told from inside by the man who ran it. It was also in 1992 when Prime Minister Yegor Gaidar issued a decree to begin the dematerialization of Compound 19. A second outbreak. Although not a single journalist has been allowed into the facility since 1992, it is said that it continues to operate underground to this day. Some 200 Russian soldiers with dogs patrol the complex and its surroundings. Almost five decades later, the Russian government is about to issue permits that allow agencies to build residential zones around the contaminated area. The local population fears that a second outbreak would occur. If that happens, hundreds of thousands of people will die. Scientists have said the area is still highly infectious, but the government has remained firm on its posture. <laughs>